a decade, a small number of ultra-sophisticated sport fishing vessels have been challenging the water down off a series of isolated outcroppings known as the Revia Tejedo Island Chain. And just recently, the Royal Polaris, which over the years has established itself as the premier flagship of the San Diego-based long-range fishing fleet, has begun to offer its passengers the ultimate in exotic fishing adventures with extended trips to far-off places that were at one time sampled by only a handful of commercial fishing boats. In 1983, the Royal was the first passenger-carrying sport fishing vessel to ever fish the incredible bountiful waters of the French Pacific Atoll known as Clipperton. One of the most critical items for these trips is bait. And prior to departure, the Royal takes on 250 scoops of live anchovies. These are referred to as season bait because they have been stored in the harbor's receivers for about six weeks. It's the old story of survival of the fittest, because during this time the weak baits die off with only the prime specimens remaining. It's important to have only the hardiest baits in the tank, because during the trip they will have to endure water temperature changes that can range anywhere from 58 to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Preparation is the key to success on these trips, and anglers use some of the traveling time to ready their tackle. These fellas are using a spring scale to adjust the pounds of pull on the reel to preset drag. This long ranger sorts out his trolling lures, and of course it pays to sharpen hooks for the battles that lie ahead. The stop on the journey southward is the barren volcanic island known as San Benedicto. Here, anxious anglers take an early shot at some of the fastest critters that God ever equipped with fins. These beasters of the sea are called wahoo, and when they intercept a bait or lure, there are few of any species that can make such an initial scorching run. Due to their streamlined shape and wild trashing action, they are not an easy fish to gaff, but this highly experienced crew never seems to miss. These fish have an awesome set of dentures. They can cut through 200-pound mono like it was being sliced by a high-speed scalpel. For this reason, when you are in Wahoo country, wire is an absolute must for all your trolling lures. And even then, these seagoing chainsaws can mangle hooks and lures beyond recognition. Regardless of how you prepare them, they are excellent table fare, comparable in taste to swordfish. And, and they don't, don't get, get any fresher than this. But aside from all the wahoo excitement, San Benedicto is primarily a bait stop. So to supplement the anchovies, which will be used extensively as chum, larger baits, such as these caballito, have to be caught. They will be fished live for the giant yellowfin. In Spanish, caballito means little horse, and that is just what this bait is. They can last a long time. Once the tanks are full, the Royal Polaris departs for the remaining 550-mile journey to Clipperton. It looks like this angler wants to troll all the way. There are a lot of entertainment amenities on board. These passengers are sharpening the eye with a little skeet shooting. Others throw out their diet plans and have a wine and cheese tasting party. Meanwhile, a patient few wait and scan the horizon for the first sighting of Clipperton. Ah, there it is! 
It looks like a chunk of paradise from one of those Hollywood South Sea Island movies. Only this is the real thing. You couldn't ask for better weather, and the sea is about as calm as a Midwest farm pond. This isolated speck with its single volcanic outcrop is a mere two miles in diameter. No resources to serve as a haven for passing ships. However, despite its checkered history of violence and death, in terms of its surrounding marine environment, Clipperton is a veritable biological horn of plenty. There's an interesting shore break, but we didn't come all this way to surf. The gin clear waters of Clipperton have been virtually untouched by sport fishermen. And, in anticipation of the species that might be hugging the atoll shore, these anxious anglers just can't wait any longer to wet a line. A leatherback Cabrilla. Some fine eating there. And here comes a member of the Jack family. Maybe they ought to rename this place Variety. Literally thousands of rainbow runners. It's like fishing in a giant aquarium. These colorful critters are like souped-up versions of California yellowtail. And even on the medium-weight tackle these fishermen are using here, they can really burn some wine. But enough of the small stuff. So the royal begins trolling. And as you can see, she doesn't have to travel very far before getting into a wide open wobble bite. These fish remain wild from the time they hit the lure to when they finally slap the deck. The position of this angler tells you he's hung on something even bigger and stronger than a wahoo. With this kind of maneuvering, it has to be a yellow fin tuna. and the crew begins putting out the caballito. While some anglers choose to do so, casting the bait isn't really necessary. All you have to do is play it out in the drift, and that brings quick action. You know those chow hound tuna are not about to pass up a free meal. on the same fish. Keep pulling. What a great sight. Just a brief glimpse of color. That means the battle is drawing to a close. Ah, the moment of ecstasy when that first gas hits the fish. Now the second one. When you have a two gas fish, you know it is good size. And most of these critters require two or more gas to bring on board. The action continues. These yellow fins just keep coming on board. Just imagine 15 to 20 giant yellow fins all coming to color at practically the same time, making circles half the length of the boat. Here is where there is no substitute for experienced personnel. And in the case of the Royal Polaris, most of their crew are not only excellent deckhands, but they are licensed ocean operators, fully capable of skippering sport fishing vessels on their own. 
On these fishing ventures, you go with the best. These tuna are some of the hardest pulling fish in the ocean. And you can see that the rods are subject to a tremendous amount of stress. These anglers are using saber sticks, which are the premier rods for battling giant yellowfin. Their specially designed stroker actions have the necessary lifting power to pump these brutes from the depths. This is a technique you'll get plenty of opportunity to practice. Pump and wind. It's a well-known fact that on that first run, tuna will scorch off with hundreds of yards of line. And if you are ever going to be able to see your prize, you're going to have to fight them every inch of the way. Over the years, the extended long-range trips have earned a worldwide reputation for outstanding yellowfin fishing. But no one ever expected the bite to be as wild as this. In fact, the tuna fishing got so hot that it was not uncommon for every one of the 28 passengers to be hooked up simultaneously. The only straight rods were the ones that were still pinned in the racks. Even veteran skippers who have logged countless hours in the world's great fishing areas will tell you that it is simply unheard of to have everyone on the boat continuously battling 100 to 200 pound class yellowfin. But at Clipperton, this is a common occurrence. The Royal Polaris was designed with plenty of deck space because in stand-up style game fishing you may have to make maneuvers like an all-pro running back. The rule of thumb for this type of fishing is to constantly follow your fish to avoid fouling other lines. Of course, the highly experienced deckhands are going to stay right on top of things to keep everyone out of trouble. When these tuna decide to make a sudden move, the deckhands may have to leap into action. And at times, they have to scramble as quickly as the fish. three gas tuna, and you know that's got to be in 130 to 175 pound class. Some people get in awkward positions. You do anything you have to to land these fish. Here is school a rainbow runner move in on the chum. They ate every bait that hit the water. There were so many out there that in order to get back into the tuna, the Royal had to make a short move. During a brief lull in the action, the passengers get in some photo sessions while the crew stack the fish in the refrigerated hold. Each angler is issued a series of numbered tags that are stapled to every fish they catch. This makes for easy identification when the fish are unloaded back at the landing. A short piece of rope eases the task of maneuvering these brutes, and it also comes in handy when the crew has to pull them from the hold at the end of the trip. These babies aren't easy to move whether they are in or out of the water. Lunker sized yellowfin keep coming aboard.
means that minutes have turned into hours. You want everything in your favor when you're battling Big Yellow Fin. And a kidney harness is a great help when you have to do it stand-up style. When used in conjunction with a heavy-duty rod belt, it can ease the pressure on your lower back. The extended Hypalon foregrip on these sticks makes for comfortable handling and affords greater leverage so you can really lay back on these fish. Of course, there's nothing wrong with taking a few seconds for a little liquid refreshment. The tuna don't have it so easy. The real drag washers aren't the only things to get warm on these trips. When fishing Clipperton, you're close to the equator, about 9 degrees latitude. And the average midday air temperature can be 90 to 100 degrees. Being sprayed with 88 degrees seawater is mighty welcome. A wrist guard, initially developed to absorb perspiration, also helps prevent chafing from the real side plates. Color is a mighty welcome sight. These are the telltale circles they make. Just a few more turns and he's yours. It's critical that you keep pumping at this stage of the game. The fish is tired and so is the angler. But you have to keep him coming your way. Just a few more feet. One tired but mighty happy angler. Skippers Frank Lopresti and Steve Loomis decide to cruise along and look for bird action, which is a sign of feeding tuna. Frank sees what he thinks is a breezing school and asks one of the deckhands to start throwing bait. The chung worked like a magic potion because within minutes, hungry yellow fins swarmed to the boat and went on a feeding frenzy. Day after day, the script remained the same. Bent rods and scorching drags. The fish were coming on board so fast that the crew did not have the time to put them into the hole. Even the cook and his assistant had to leave their galley chores to help gaff fish. This fellow was praying to the tuna gods. As you can see, the yellowfin has his undivided attention. There is no sex discrimination on these trips either. This lady can stand there and pull with the best of them. like the gentleman on the left to get into the action. Excuse me, sir, I'm coming through. Our friend here is still making love to the rail. At least he doesn't take up too much deck space. The Long Ranger smiles because he knows he is sure to get fed after he throws this bait. Dusk begins to envelop the boat, but the bite continues into the evening hours for those who are still willing to cast yet another bait.